It is time, America. It really is. For the last few weeks or so, we've been concentrating on all the negativity as pushed by CNN, as pushed by Fox News, as pushed by various blue, pe blue tick people uh, on social media. They've got the verifications. They think that they can uh, try and influence the election outcome. No. All right. Uh, President Biden has decided to no longer be the nominee for the Democrat Party. Uh, and basically now, VP Kamala Harris is likely to step forward and be the official candidate. Obviously, you've got to go through the process, the technicalities. But let's now call her the, the Democratic nominee to be president. We have to get behind her. Now, I know I've expressed my thoughts that Biden was bullied out, but at the end of the day, that's happened. We need to go forward. For every negative person saying that Biden was too old, uh, that VP Kamala Harris can't win uh, because she's a female, all of those people, those are the people who really right now can just go and follow Jake Tapper, whatever he has to say. We have to concentrate on now it be in time. Seize in the moment, all right? Because right now, this is probably the most important election in the history of America. What happens in America affects the whole global world. Everybody. Speaking of leaders who are not holding back, the former president put out a truth social saying, now we have to start all over again. Mm -hmm. um, there, mm -hmm. There is a reality. Donald yeah. Trump wanted to be running against Joe Biden, especially since the debate implosion. They had started their campaign thinking, actually, Kamala Harris was much better to attack. They used to use this line of, you're actually voting for Kamala Harris. But I think that they realized if the Democrats put forward another generation of leadership, that that is going to activate voters who were inclined to stay home. The youth vote is going to be a Essential. It could decide this election. A younger candidate, whether it's Kamala Harris or someone else, could turn the tide of this. So I think that today, you know, the team down in Palm Beach is really nervous. They've mm. modeled this all around Joe Biden and Kamala Harris yeah. introduces incredible unknowns or whoever it yeah. may end up being. Absolutely. Sources close to several of the people who might be considered possible challengers to Vice President Harris for the nomination. People close to California Governor Gavin Newsom, people close to Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, all saying they're preparing to stand down. They do not believe that Democrats will challenge Vice President Kamala Harris at the convention in Chicago. Already in this immediate aftermath of President Biden's momentous decision, you see behind the scenes Democratic consolidation. The real race will be for vice presidential nomination on the Democratic side. But it is intriguing to me as a reporter. But there's no one at this moment preparing behind the scenes to challenge Vice President Harris. That's right. Governor Gretchen Whitmer just saying with Biden out, my job in this election will remain the same, doing everything I can to help elect Democrats and stop Donald Trump. She wrote that on social media, so she will not get in the way of Kamala Harris seeking this Democratic Party nomination. Project 25 isn't just some whimsical blueprint uh, dreamed up to scare people. It is something that could happen if the former president becomes the next president, as in one Donald J. Trump. We've got to put the negativity to one side. I'm asking you now, help me. Join us. There are more of you than them. If you can support this channel in any way possible, press the thanks button. We have, I think it's 15 weeks, all right? We've really got to step up our game. Everybody who's interested in free, yeah, has got to step up the game. We have to find a way of challenging the liars, taking on the bullshitters, standing up to the garbage which Fox put out. We need your support. This is not grifting. This is everybody getting together to do their thing, support Kamala Harris. Unless you're going to get the guy who can't even control his bowels in public. The guy who has been charged with rape. The guy who put a porn star before his own wife giving birth, who plays the victim at every single opportunity, who encourages division, spreads fear. Every single possible way we have to right now understand one thing. It's time. <clears throat> So today we're here in a bipartisan fashion to show leadership in an effort to end this senseless violence. And it, violence, it can be ended.
I'm looking at the contrast in statements behind, uh, between uh, the Clintons, who said there is no greater threat than Donald Trump. And so they wholeheartedly have put their support behind the vice president, Kamala Harris. The Obamas are saying that uh, they have confidence that the leaders of our party will create a process from which an outstanding nominee emerges. Is there time for the Democratic Party to go through a process? You know, I, there is time, to, but, but every little detail of a process that you create, even if it's a truncated one or a mini primary or whatever, every little detail becomes uh, something to fight over. Uh, so, so there is an advantage to a process in the sense that you get the rank and file to feel like they weren't just being forced into a decision. There are some people who wanted Joe Biden to stay. So they already feel like the kind of uh, a cabal plus the media has forced a good man out of a job that they think he should be reelected to. And so what do you do with the people with those bruised feelings? Forcing them into a, into a new uh, nominee right away uh, might not soothe those feelings. Um, I think Bob is ex exactly right in the sense of you've got to also um, create the conditions for the party and everyone to celebrate Joe Biden, who has just done something that the more they celebrate what he's done, the more of a contrast they draw to Donald Trump. As Liz Cheney said, here's somebody giving up power. Okay, somebody who their whole career was counted out. So it's giving up power and moving against personal instinct, which is I'm going to show them when they count me out and, and, and it's worked for him. And that's quite a contrast to uh, Donald Trump, who was so desirous to hang on to power that, according to the leaders in his own party, he inspired an attack on the Capitol. So to the extent that you celebrate this decision by Joe Biden in this period of time and don't immediately get on to Harris, it actually works to the Democratic Party's benefit. Yeah, Trump is now the oldest nominee that we've ever seen in U.S. presidential history. Scott, Jen well, obviously, President Biden made this decision, one that, you know, some Democrats wanted him to make it sooner Where than now. But does, does it, does it, is it interesting to you that we haven't seen a picture of Joe Biden today? We don't have a picture of him signing the letter? I mean, this is a huge decision. Also, the letter doesn't say well, why COVID. exactly he's stepping down. Why is he stepping down? This, he's the current, we've been talking about this for weeks. He's the current president. He's now apparently unable to continue in his race. We don't know why exactly he is stepping down. I think Republicans who are raising concerns about his fitness to lead today have good questions today, and now they're unanswered by this letter and the mystery surrounding him today. Yeah, well, he does have COVID, so I think that's probably why we're not seeing him. You know, I just talked to Chris Coons, his co-chair, who spoke to him after this announcement came out and talked about this. He said he's not resigning the presidency, despite those calls from people like House Speaker Mike Johnson. But I do, 